Okay, well, let's just say goodbye to Ilya. Ilya's um, come up from Melbourne with um, our couple of small boxes. And believe it or not, my Bobcat got this 1,200 kilo box um, off uh, <laughs> box. You know, seriously, there's no way I could have put this on my car trailer. Uh, it's too high. It really, I was thinking about going down to get it with the car trailer and yeah, no, that's, that just would have been a bad idea. Um, mainly because we would have had two boxes, cubic area of, you know, seven cubic square metres. And I would have had to put one on one side, one on the other, and the weight proportion would have been all wrong. And um, uh, David, you know who you are. Thanks, mate. I can see the amount of work's gone into this. I'm um, uh, just basically... Well, you know, we've got off the truck and uh, obviously there's a little bit to do from here. Um, I'm actually going to the big tall one. I was going to pop it in the door and and um, leave it till tomorrow because I'm still unfortunately getting a few te chest pains and things. And But, um, uh, you know, live forever, do you? I think, I think we'll pull this one to bits. And um, this one here, obviously safe in there. Uh, and I've got the boys coming out tomorrow as well. Um, this one, unfortunately, is right on my tipping weight, so I don't really want to take it too much further. So I think we'll just, um, we'll just sort of, uh, I don't know. They nail these things together. Oh, come off it, really? Uh, have they heard of screws? Seriously? <laughs> oh, it's probably just nail gun together. Unstrap. And, uh, yeah, nothing a crowbar won't sort out. I have to make sure I don't drop any nails on the ground here. That'd be the other little problem anyway if anyone needs a really big box that you, know, you want to cart hundreds and hundreds of radios in uh, we've got the perfect boxes for you um, two of them actually <laughs> uh, but I tell you what this box here you could turn this into a buddy bench it's just <laughs> look at it unreal and I think David correct me if I'm wrong I think the boxes are about a couple of grand um, by the time we you know shipped it all up but just so you know the, the thinking in that was that and David's a real smart boy, no question. Um, he sort of said, look, what you spend on these boxes is what you don't spend on insurance. And he's 100% right. Um, because at the end of the day, I mean, let's face it, nobody's going to cover three radios that got damaged anyway. They're just going to be, the, the, the excess will be more than it's worth. So in some respects, uh, he's, he's right on the money because this was the way of protecting it. And we'll obviously do some videos as we start to unpack it all and, and get through it. But um, David, mate, thanks so much. This is really uh, legendary what you've done, and um, it's it's been a it's been a journey. I can tell you, um, just to show people, I was up till ten thirty last night, and I I know the deal. Uh, there's those of you that are going to criticise me and say, listen, you know, you're just out of hospital, and trust me, I am taking it fairly easy. These took twice the time to put up that they'd normally take. Um, <laughs> and actually, it was clearing all the rubbish in the other tables that were here. We had loads and loads of other tables here. Um, but um, the, uh, yeah, I'm just finding if I just take it nice and slow, nice and easy, um, still getting a few pains in the chest, unfortunately. But um, um, they said that sort of can be fairly standard for a little while. But um, just to um, relax when, you know, that happens. But anyway. All right, well. I suppose instead of me talking about this, I better go get my angle grinder and um, get these steel straps off this big box. Ilya, who delivered this, what a top class guy, seriously. What an absolute top class guy. Um, and, um, you know, and Ross um, as well down there. Uh, just, just a, I suppose, just a little heads up. Um, it's not only when you look at a box like this. Um, so you've got, you know, 1,200 kilos, um, one of two. The other one was about 400 and something kilos, I think, from memory. Um, and it's not just the problem of the um, of getting the thing onto a trailer and, and effectively, you know, getting it home. Um, look, I've got a trailer that I reckon if we put this on its side, um, but what the big problem is is you're bringing it in by ship. Actually, I'll go inside so the wind's not so bad. Um, you're bringing it in by ship. And look, we've had this experience before, but not like this one. This one was a nightmare. Um, not because of anything David did, not because of the freighters in New Zealand, not because of anything, because of the wharfs. Um, it's a fixed game at the wharfs. Now, you will think that I'm insane when I'm about what I'm about to tell you. Um, <laughs> every radio that we sell is gonna have to have a bit of a levy of the double up, so I can tell you. Uh, but it was $2,700 for Ilya, and it's not Ilya's fault, and it's not even Ross's fault. 
$2,700 to come 350 kilometers from Melbourne to Tangambalanga to bring these boxes up here because uh, <laughs> these guys at the wharfs, when they go to pick up, they sit there for hours. Ilya turned up at three this morning. He didn't get out of there till um, about uh, seven, you know, sort of, and then he's come straight up here. And they do, they, they make him wait around. They, you know, so can you imagine Brenton turns up with his trailer and his four wheel drive? <laughs> You'll be spending the night there. And, and that's, that's the thing about, when you're starting to look at freighting anything, um, please don't get fooled by the fact that uh, bringing it in by boat seems cheaper. Look, this was just impractical to air freight. You know, there's no way in the world we could have air freighted this. Um, but what I will say is that uh, the wharf fees, the, look, you've got, we, we probably burnt, uh, David's got some of the numbers, so I haven't got them all here, but we probably burnt, oh look, actually I've seen the fees, the actual fees, um, the wharf fees and, oh, probably a couple of grand just in you know crap fees that just don't really make sense um <laughs> well they do because they are just real fees what they you know some of them are government fees um you know quarantine inspection this has got timber on it of course so you know they had to come and make sure that it didn't need to be treated blah yada 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 etc etc um but you know so just be aware uh, and I, look i, I want to say this too if look i'm, I'm now not the opti beam dealer anymore uh because i retired and uh chris vk3 fy is the Opti Beam dealer and Steve VK3 uh, YW won't mind me talking about this. We actually had to sea freight his antenna over. By the time we were finished and we handed it to Steve, we were a thousand dollars down on the price that we quoted Steve in regards to the air freight that you know. So and, and that was not Steve's fault. We you know we wore that as a cost of you know cost of doing business. Um, but yeah, just I mean that's a really good example. Um, air freight your Opti Beams. No matter what, you might think you're going to save money. Trust me, I can show you the paperwork. You will not save money. Um, it, it better. I mean, right now, freighting anything is just bullshit. It's just terrible. But just yeah, um, certainly, if you ever want advice, anybody on the channel, if you ever want advice on freighting, um, especially big shipments, um, you know, with uh, heavy shipments, uh, something that's a fair few cubic meters, definitely talk to us because um, we've sort of had a bit of experience now, and it's just what it is. You know, unfortunately, the um, uh, you know, the game is the game and, uh, <laughs> and the shipping game is certainly one that, uh, yeah, as you can see, the boys have been busy, um, trying to put Yasus together, trying to put Kenwoods together, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, look, uh, tomorrow we won't actually be in here doing a lot. I don't think, cause I'll get a lot of this done today, just to a large extent. Uh, we actually want to clear out the uh, garage next door and start creating more room. We need more room. Um, more Kenwoods. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, as I'm just talking, um, I suppose uh, you might as well have a look at just what the boys have been doing. Um, this is Steve, VK3, uh, Sugar Mike Whiskey, and VK3, November Fox Sierra that have been coming in uh, uh, normally one day of the weekend, you know, sort of, and um, um, we just worked out a bit of a sweetheart deal where, they make a couple of dollars and I, because I can't get this done by myself. It's just crazy. No way in the world. But trust me, they're being more than generous in what they're charging me. I, I, if I had to get, you know, people in um, with, with real, you know, rates. Uh, anyway, um, they, so thank you to the two Steves. It really is appreciated because, um, you know, I wish I could pay you more, to be honest. All right. So boxes. So glad that we didn't... Um, uh, we didn't uh, hit the tipping weight of, uh, <laughs> I saw this box going sideways, to be honest, thinking that my Bobcat is good for about uh, a ton to 1.1 deadlift. This is 1.2. But Ilya said to me, he said, mate, if you just, if you just tilt it back a bit towards yourself with your Bobcat forks, he said, it's got to be back towards yourself. Then bring yourself back and then bring yourself so slow. And then the last second you do the tilt that comes, you know, back down because your true dead weight will be then. And what he was saying was, you know, try and get the weight more back over the, over the bobcat a bit more. Um, and he was right. We didn't have a problem. He, he was, I was stressing. <laughs> I was thinking, I didn't say anything to him, but I, I was still stressing, thinking, oh, I don't know, you know. <laughs> but um, no, and, and that's the other thing too. Trust the guys that do this sort of stuff. Um, he knew exactly, you know, where to park the truck, where we needed to come off. He wanted to be on concrete. I hated the idea of being on concrete because I've got to, you know, pressure clean all my bobcat marks off now. But the truth is, he's right. You know, you want flat surfaces. You want everything to be sturdy. And yeah. Anyway, all good news. Um, Sam's boxer, we're still doing a few things too. Jeez. Still haven't driven the GT4. 
heart attacks heart attacks get in the way of having a good time seriously and the reason we've got to get this bloody stuff down to there is because there's that hr holden coming down in no time at all from uh, uh david uh from queensland so we have got our work cut out for us uh, um but uh here's the good news i'm not down in melbourne in st vincent's which uh uh, today was the day I was supposed to be there. Um, <laughs> get this, they, they couldn't actually get me in. <laughs> you could be dying, doesn't matter. And by the way, ask me about my uh, my pompous ideas on, um, on um, uh, what am I trying to say here? Oh, on uh, private health insurance. Um, I have the top cover, private health care, uh, you know, cover. It's You can't get any better. Let me tell you, this will be a subject of another video another time. Trust me, it's been a useless, absolutely useless. Um, anyway, look, I know that if things got you know really, really bad, yeah, all right, it might be handy. But you know what? Um, I'm starting to wonder. There's some really, really bad things happening in the medical system that affects everybody, unfortunately, in this country. All right, I shouldn't be going on about stuff that annoys me. I'm still here breathing, so let's you know not. To... Actually, Ilya just said that to me. He said, "Brother." You're still alive. It's good, you know. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, thanks, mate. I, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying the living bit. That's that's for sure. Um, <laughs> so anyway, we'll bring a video to you soon. I think the next one you'll see will probably be we'll get a few of them, you know, loaded up on the racks over here for now. Um, we're gonna we, we've run out of racks. I I might have to go steal some from the dog kennels. Uh, the two Steves, if you're listening, <laughs> Sam will not be happy. But I might just steal one just to go in this spot here, just to. Um... Anyway, we'll see how we go. Uh, but I can't see how those big boxes there with hundreds and hundreds of radios fit onto this area here. No, no that's not going to happen. I think we're going to have a few boxes um, uh, sort of sitting on the ground in this. Uh, I, I, I love having this bit of space free, but no, I don't think so, not for very long. All right, thanks very much for having a look at this video. And uh, as I said, if you ever want advice on, you know, shipping stuff over, um, whilst my advice might be a little bit harsh in the fact that, you know, it's, it's a bit of a, <laughs> it's a tough game. It's, it's something that you really got to be, you know, mindful that, uh, things don't always go exactly how you want. Uh, but, um, because of David's uh, preparedness and thinking, um, I would have, by the way, I would have shipped these in a whole lot of cardboard boxes and, and rolled the dice. It was David that said, you're on drugs. It's not going to happen that way. We're going to do it this way. And when I saw his plan, much better plan. <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> All right. Um, those of you who don't know who David is, um, we'll talk about that. I just need to talk to him first. Um, but I, I really can't say enough good things about you, David. You know that. Um, but, mate, just um, I'll uh, keep you updated with everything. And uh, not dead yet, mate. Thanks for your uh, message too. I, I appreciate that. I, I'm still getting back to people at the moment. But, uh, yeah, uh, um, uh, by the way, and this is the bond between New Zealand and Australia, um, David was the first one that when he heard that I'd had the heart attack, you know, what can I do to help? Is there any, nothing, no, matter what, no matter what it is, let me help, you know, like, and uh, yeah, good guy. All right. All the best, guys. Thanks for having a look at this video and uh, listen to me rave on and uh, oh, I get a little bit out of breath, but yeah, we'll just, um, we'll just sort of go take it nice and slow. Cheers. All, all the best. VK3, Charlie, Mike, Tangambalanga, Northeast Victoria. All the best. Catch you soon.